Hello, I was at CEDO lately, about a week ago, and people asked me quite a few questions about what can we do with AI or artificial intelligence and their applications mainly for clinicians. There is a lot of research being done right now on AI, but it's mainly for academics and people want to know. So let's have a quick conversation on what could be done. The first thing that really is of interest, it's called, which I call predictive AI, which basically we will be using for growth prediction and probably in the future for outcome meaning what can we expect from our treatments you know the outcome of treatments is really important so i think ai are first of all for growth and the best way to do it is to use large data sets which is a bit of a problem in orthodontics but hopefully we're going to be able to share them into a red cap system or something that is fully identified and we have to use which you see right on this screen right now, which I call the Python environment, which is a language, computer language, which is very much used in orthod orthodontics or AI. And this one is a little bit of a, I would say, first attempt to train a convolutional neural networks and all sorts of interesting things that you can do with AI. It's very complicated, but this is the backbone of what we do. Then from the large data set, we will have a training set, which is all the data that we are going to insert into the AI machine or machine learning algorithms. So we're going to train the data for predictions or for outcomes. Then we need a validation set. So usually it's a 80% training set. So if you have a thousand records, so you're going to use 800 here and you're going to use 200 there. And once it's validated, which means that you are roughly at 90 to 95% accuracy rate, meaning the machine learning system can predict your, I don't know, the questions you're asking at 95% truth, then you will put your own input, meaning you put one of your record in it. So it's your own record. And you will get a prediction. So that's basically what is coming along and coming soon into our world. Sorry, my writing is not the best. So you have a prediction. So this is the all the line of code. So you can see we have 276 line of code that have been used for prediction. You can see the term prediction is right here. And actual, which is what we are working for. So the predicted is the labeling. So all these, you don't need to really um, look in. This is basically one and I've done with uh, the intention of, sorry, I can't erase on this, the intention of looking if the tooth is going to be impacted or not impacted. And the model, which is right here, is saved and ready to be used for a detector. So that's what I did. It, it's only a 275 lines of code, which is very rudimentary and maybe needs to be better explained. But that's the concept. So what about you, the clinicians? What am I going to do with this? Well, you're going to have a lot of patient's data. From there, you will have some inputs like class of malocclusion, overjet, overbite, crowding, age of patients, and how many more you want to input. So this is the input. This is basically where the machine learning or whatever you're going to see will be is right here. So it's commission learning, or you may have heard a neural network will be working in the background. So this is a black box. You don't really see what's going on. And then the output will be given for your question. And in this case, all the teeth are going to be impacted or not. So 
This is basically a prediction model. Why we do it? Because we can, as you can see in the input column, we can put a lot of inputs, not just one or two, and the computer will make inferences in order for you to get a better prediction. Something we use a lot too in orthodontics at the moment is to segment comb beams and obviously STLs from intral scans. So these two are very, very popular. We can fuse them too, but that's basically what we're doing. We don't take impressions anymore and we're using 3D comb beam radiography more and more for complicated studies. The problem we're having when I talk about segmentations, people tell me, well, I don't quite really understand what you're talking about, but really this is a computer scientist problem in a sense that you see those nets, FG, SegNet, RCNN, it's all networks. You got all these ResNets, CNN, and the GAN nets, which is um, antagonistic networks. You don't really want to know what it does. This is the black box or this is the back end of AI. A clinician does not need to bother himself or herself with this. This is what the computer scientists will build for us in order for us to get into the clinical aspect of orthodontics. But at the, at the moment, we already have, and I, again, I want to emphasize, I don't have any clinic, uh, any financial interest in any of them, but I use them. We have DiagnoCat, that's the first one I use. 3D Slicer is open source, so it doesn't cost anything. It's a very nice software, so that's open source, but it's kind of limited in its segmentation at the moment. You have Orca, which is a new uh, company from Israel. You have Redu, a nice company from Belgium, and you have Dental Mesh AI, which is, I think, my, my partner, not partner, but my person that I really talked to a long time ago, Dr. Plaxkin has been creating. So all these five, and there are others, I'm just talking about the ones I know, but please do not bother yourself with it. This is not what you need to learn. This is not for clinicians. This is what you need to use. So you can use this to your advantage. This is for users. Do not try to try to understand and work with all these algorithms, functions, and you know, it's not necessary. Is we simulate the tooth movement using this is a blender environment so we simulate the molars coming forward we're closing the spaces so there is some movement from this is moving this way and this way this is moving this way so you can see that there are a lot of movements taking place at the same time but we can register mathematically everything that happens on the right hand side of the screen as you can see and then we can get a mathematical representation we coordinate the movements for the least amount of round tripping at the same time every single tooth right here has its XYZ coordinates registered that you can enter into a Python script this is actually a CVS file which is an Excel file and you can see the 24 teeth are there and then we can calculate mathematically what's going on and then we can input these data into a machine learning algorithm that will give us better ideas. So in conclusions, at the moment, where is AI useful? First of all, you recognize and classify malocclusion. You can use random forest, you can use um, all sorts of AI tools. It's an AI tool. Again, you don't need to know, but the machine learning will give you, depending on how many inputs you give you, uh, your input into the system will give you some prediction of classification. As we said before, you can use neural networks to use for prediction, either for growth, remember, and for anything you want, many uh, extractions, non-extraction cases, you can predict all sorts of things. So we use neural networks for that. You can use simulation software, which is already available for you. It's very simple to use nowadays. Uh, I use a lot of Blender myself. These, these ones are used mainly not so much for simulation, but more for segmentation. So we segment everything with these, and then we can go to simulation. So I should put it across this way. 
Now this is new. This is you can then by using specific software you can calculate every single tooth movement in space at different stages and you can feed that into a machine learning so the calculations are now well done and by the way airliner companies have been using these for quite a while so this is what you see on the right hand side it's called calculations and then the next step which i'm interested in in fabrication and sure smile which is a sure smile robot right here Yes, sure smile robots have been working for about 15 years, but they were not, I don't know if they were using AI, but now we can use AI to direct the robot to bend specific wires. They don't have to be straight wire, they can be cantilevers, they can be anything, they can be segmented pieces that you want to use for um, a liner when we use the, what's called a hybrid system. So we can fabricate nowadays through robots because you have the mathematic representation of the system right here. So where are we? Pretty much done. Recognition is available nowadays. Prediction is getting there by, by I would say, the day. More and more and more papers are being published on prediction using AI. The simulations are coming in and obviously you all use aligners so you understand the concept of simulation on a computer. But I think AI will further push the envelope to a higher level. We can calculate every single movement, so then the computer can build and learn and build a machine learning algorithm based on these calculations and the outcomes. So it's very important. It's coming. It's orange. And the fabrication at the moment, except for sure smile, which I'm not sure is using AI. I don't, I don't have the knowledge to, to say anything about that, I think is also coming. So the conclusion of my presentation is AI is very useful. You use it without even knowing. There are many more applications that are coming in the market, one being dental monitoring as an example. And I'm not going to talk about that today, but be aware that the profession is changing really rapidly. And again, your interest in AI is only uh, good if you can improve the outcomes on your patients. So I would encourage you to at least look into it. You don't have to become an AI expert tomorrow. That's not the point. But clinically, there are a lot of applications that will make your treatment planning and predictions much better in the future. Thank you.